Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. Now, whenever and wherever you happen to be during this crazy month of duality, September, (laughs) I hope that you are able to balance the polarity inside of yourself and that you are able to separate fact from fiction in all events in your past and make the conclusions that you need to from a loftier, higher perspective. You know, there's always your story, their story and the real story. So, (laughs) you know, the truth. (laughs) So no matter what you've done in your past and no matter what other people have done in their past, the truth of the matter is you are 100% a child of God. You are 100% love and light at the core of your soul. Um, I was uh, personally attacked today by a couple different sources and one of them was because I had said that I am praying for a group of men in, um, I think Honduras, Tyrese Gibson put a thing about how the prison system is overpopulated they're cleaning up the streets so that everyone can be safer. And if, if anyone's associated with a gang, boom, they go in jail and they don't get visits from their family. They don't have any access to the outside world. And somebody, I guess a guard took pictures of the conditions and they are, um, chest to back. (laughs) I mean, they're so crammed in like sardines that they can't hardly move. And there's like three rows of beds or, or like, I guess three rows of, it looks kind of like, um, well, I guess you could say bunk beds, but instead of just two beds, you want on bottom one on top, it's beds all the way across. And it looks like three men to a twin bed and, uh, they're all crammed in there like sardines and they are not given anything to wear. They have to wear underwear, nothing else. And that's it. 38,000 men, more than 38,000 men in one place, in one uh, uh, a jail or prison. But it's a, a prison that can only hold 18,000 people. So there's 20,000 people more than needs to be uh, there, and they're not building any more prisons. They're just cramming people in like fucking sardines. And I put in things saying I am praying for these men, and I am praying for their victims and you know, I'm praying for everybody, um, in the whole of the situation, you know, because that's what as an enlightened person we do when you're illumined, you pray for everybody because when you're able to look at the soul of a person and you understand that they are pure and they would never do anything wrong if they were spiritually awake, people do all kinds of crap in their sleep that they would never do when they're awake, you know? I don't, I don't sit around like Rick on Rick and Morty drooling all day long. And yet when I'm asleep, I drool on my pillow. (laughs) I wake up and I'm like, what the hell is my pillow wet? That's insane. (laughs) I don't do that when I'm awake. Damn it. You know, people do things in their sleep that they don't do when they're awake. And people do things when they are spiritually asleep that they would never do in a million years if they were awakened spiritually. So when you pray for people who are bad, you're praying for their soul to waken up inside of them so that they could go, holy crap, 
I was such a bad person and you know what now I'm getting better I'm, I'm going to start that path and that journey of owning up to what I did and I'm going to get better now I think these men are there's no parole there's no getting out they're in jail for the rest of their lives until they die which isn't going to be too long from now oh by the way they do get a face mask and underwear that's what they get to wear so I said I was praying for these guys and this guy who has the word scientist in his names happened to say what the hell is wrong with you these people have killed you know people I'm like yeah but I see that there's a loftier perspective here you know and he's like I certainly hope you're praying for the victims I'm like you know you're so angry and filled with judgment of me and I'm your mirror as everybody is we're all mirrors for each other <laughs> and I said you know hey look this is the thing is you're so angry and judgmental of one thing that I said that you could not read my whole comment that said I am praying for their victims and I am praying for their country as well as praying for them because it, it doesn't matter I mean I've met people who were spiritually completely transformed and reformed after having an awakening experience starting on the spiritual path owning up to everything they did like my friend um, Greg who I sadly have lost touch with <clears throat> and his last name is so freaking common that there's li literally like 30,000 people with the same name and I'm just I wish I could find him again because he's one of the coolest people in the, in the world he was an original crip he was a gang member and he did kill other gang members from the rival gang but he went to jail actually for attempted murder and he was a terrible person you know but he spent four and a half years thinking and thinking and thinking and contemplating what he had done and when he got out he started meditating and he started owning up to what he did and he started to fix things in his life and fix things in himself and he started going to counseling and when I met him he was a child care worker like I was and we were helping kids stay out of gangs and off drugs and help them to be safe and we helped them with their schoolwork and we um, helped these kids in a group home for gay and lesbian adolescent social services so he, he was like one of the coolest people I'd ever met and one day we were driving in his car together and he goes I have something to tell you you need to know this about me because we're friends and we're becoming very close and you need to know that and then he told me I went to prison for attempted murder and he said that that person who I was that anger that angry little boy that just just never got healed over and over and over again you know came out for years and I am in control of it but it's like every day I have to prevent myself from flying into homicidal rage, right? And he's like, things don't always make me very angry, right? But there's that part of me, that shadow side that I now know exists. And now I have to contend with him every day. And last time I talked to him, he had changed his name to Raven and he was doing tarot card readings and and chakra balancing and all kinds of cool stuff and he's like a totally different person and he and I had we were sisters we were in a past life together um like spiritual mediums we were um half black and half white back um in that life and people like we were just an anomaly like people wanted to come and see us because we were so strange and we were I think from the north part of the US and so just we were sisters and we went around telling everybody um, all these psychic things and reading cards and all kinds of cool stuff <laughs> and I thought that was really strange because in my spare time I would draw on a notebook and I would draw um, pictures of dresses like from the 1800s and one day he's like I can't believe that and he showed me uh, his drawings were almost the same dress and he's like, I know this sounds insane. I'm like, oh, he's drawing 1800 dresses, like, you know, like dresses from that time period. And, and, and then we kind of looked at each other and then he had this flash and he's like, yeah, it's you. You're my sister from that life. You know, we dated for a while and things just didn't work out. I wish it had because he was one of the coolest people in the world. But when I decided that um, we need to only be friends, he went off and met 
we met this woman together and he said, she wants to go on a date with me. Do you mind? And I said, no. And two months later she was pregnant and (laughs) okay, I'm not into this now. This is just crazy. And I loved her. She was my friend there for years too. So yeah, yeah, it was cool. Things happen the way they're supposed to happen, but we are a mirror for everybody else. Right. And they're a mirror for us. So when we're behaving badly, (laughs) then they get to reflect that back to us. But sometimes people will just like personally attack us. And what they're really doing is they're just attacking themselves against us. <laughs> you know, like that guy, what the hell are you thinking? What the hell are you doing? You know, it's like, I just pointed out that every person is created by God and only God can judge me. So I'm not judging them. I'm showing you what it looks like to be non judgmental, right? Yeah, you know, I didn't say all that, but it's the truth. Like I'm showing him how love and compassion, kindness, and a life lived with in non-judgment is right. In me, of all people, I was the most judgmental bitch around. No one would ever know in a million years. It was all inside my head, though. Oh yeah, well, look at that person there. Well, you know. Now, <laughs> and when I opened myself to, up to spirituality, boy, my. Oh, I had a spirit guide for a while. I've had three different spirit guides. I think they quit on me. (laughs) I think honestly, I have different spiritual guides for different parts of my life for, you know, it's probably all pre-planned, but it feels like they just keep quitting on me because (laughs) I'm a handful, I guess. I don't know in inside my mind or something, but my first, uh, Christopher David was my first spiritual guide. And every time he I, I would think something horrible and judgmental. He would freaking trip me. He would trip me. Or he would um, untie my shoe and someone would step on my shoelace and I would fall. You know, every time I had a bed, like something like that, something would happen every time. Something embarrassing, really embarrassing would happen to me every time I had a horrible thought. And I told him, help me be a better person. Help me get through this crap and this anger and the horrible things that I'm going through. Help me. Cause I don't want to be that person and I don't know what to do. You know, once I start realizing, Oh shit, I better get better. You know, I, I better uh, be a better person, you know? And, and once we um, realize that we are a child of God and we do deserve everything in the world and we do need, especially to forgive ourselves and to forgive others, we have to forgive them for what they've done. We don't need to have them over on Christmas morning to open presents, you know, like we don't need to invite them into our fricking world. They don't need to eat a meal with us, but from a distance, impersonally, we need to love everybody on the planet. That includes Trump and, uh, Putin and Kim Jong-un and all the bad guys that we perceive as bad, all the people we label one way or the other, you know, if they were wide awake spiritually, um, you know, they would be completely healed. They would be a hundred percent ashamed of who, what they had done in the past. They would make atonements and what is atonements, but the word atonement literally break it down. It means at one mint to make atonement is to become one with something. You atone at one, you become at one with them. So I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of being personally attacked. So there's something in me that I need to work on maybe to stop those attacks. You know, I mean, now I have one person in my life that's constantly barraging me about the past. You did this. You said this, this thing happened. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. You, 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 you. You know, but when you do that, what happens is you have one finger pointing at that person and like four fingers pointing back at yourself or three and a thumb, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and it's like completely insane. You know, it's like, you can only apologize for something heartfelt once is enough. And if they can't take the one apology and you've given a hundred more after that, the 99 apologies just really weren't really you can't apologize. If you have one good heartfelt apology, there's no reason or no way that you can apologize deeper than a deep apology. Right. It's just gone. It's just, it's, it's done. It's like, you know, but when the other person can't forgive you, that's on them. It's not on you. 
it's on them it's not on you you know but it's really important to know at this time this this energy of darkness versus lightness that's freaking escalating like so fucking rough lately it's been really really hard lately i it's just it's too much it has gotten to be too much it really has <laughs> so I don't know. I, we have to keep on keeping on. It's been, let me see, I'm looking at this here. Today's the seventh. So what's that? A fourth of the week. Does it feel like we just lived through four fucking months? Cause we did four months of spiritual growth. Remember September is a month in which we're going to live a full year of spiritual growth. If we allow ourselves to spiritually grow this month, <laughs> I mean, it freaking feels like it to me. I don't know about you guys, but it really freaking feels like it to me for sure. For sure. So, okay, here we go. I'm going to, I'm going to read you guys some things that, you know, spiritual ascension symptoms. This has been extremely necessary. A few people have been, writing to me and saying thank you for um, putting up the uh, spirit, not putting up, but I mean, I mean, talking on my show about the spiritual ascension symptoms, because otherwise you just feel like you're crazy, right? You just feel like, what the hell? I was just reading something about twin flames and it said all the things that happen when you're about to meet your twin. And one of the things that they say is that, um, you know, you start to telepath with that person before you meet them. Now I've been telepathing with my guy for months, so I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll never meet. Hell, I don't know. I want him to feel emotionally comfortable when he gets ready. When he's ready, I want to be in his life. I don't want to be in his life beforehand. You know, there's no reason to start bickering <laughs> or fighting when it's like the past coming to play. I'm, I don't want to invite the past to play. <laughs> I want to stay in the present, but... So I just give him love and light constantly. And when he's ready, he'll come. He'll come my way. And if he doesn't, I'm okay. I love myself. I could be alone forever and be happy. That's fine with me. I might get a cat or a bird or something. Not both, but. (laughs) But it's kind of um, probably a bird. Maybe I'm less allergic to birds. I don't know. Anyway, it's been really telling, though, when I look at the ascension symptoms. Now, over the weekend, I'm going to tell you what happened to me uh, with the physical ascension symptoms because I don't want to say it before I read these things to you. Um, And some of them, I I did read it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I had that, I had that. So purging in the form of massive uh, diarrhea, that happened to me on Saturday. I woke up, and I was like, wait a minute. Oh, my stomach doesn't feel right. This is weird. And I thought, oh, hell's bells. I should not have taken the enzymes last night. And I, I blame myself. I'm like, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. It's it, it's the enzymes I took. And, well, oops. <laughs> and about two or three hours later, I finally was able to leave the bathroom. I mean, it was that bad. Purging, 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 constant purging. And, and I was just like, I finally got out of the bathroom. And I was just like, I feel like I've been through a fucking ordeal. It was so traumatic. I mean, being a Virgo, I hate even utilizing the the restroom or even acknowledging that I do, right? I mean, I'm a Virgo and I'm really freaking freaked out about stuff like that anyway. (laughs) So I was just like, "Ah," you know, lighting one match after another, freaking out totally, making sure the bathroom windows are open. I mean, just, it was really bad. And I'm like, what the hell? I mean, you'd think that I started a detox diet, and I didn't. And I went downstairs, and I said to my son, I can't believe <clears throat> last night I didn't eat a very big dinner. I ate pretty pretty good, but not, like, overwhelmingly too much or something. You know, and I, and I <clears throat> you know, so I took these enzymes. I really think that they're affecting me in a negative way. I just had diarrhea for, like, almost three hours, like two and a half hours. And he said, well, I didn't take any enzymes and I just had diarrhea for three hours too. 
I just got out of the bathroom like maybe five minutes before you. I'm like, no way. He said, yeah, it's been terrible. I don't know what the hell happened. And I thought, well, maybe we have a flu. Maybe we have a bug. Maybe there's a parasite. But then the next day, even later that day, we didn't have it. So, all right, fine. <clears throat> all right. So went about my day and I started looking at the Ascension symptoms like the next day, that day and the next day. And sure enough, that is a huge one. And a lot of people are having that just a massive purge. (laughs) So if that did happen to you, if that is happening to you, I don't want you to freak out and go, holy crap, I've got the, uh, the COVID-19 that affects the lower GI tract. You might not have that. It's probably a spiritual purging. I've been having, and at the same time I had massive pain as well as, um, intermittent, intermittent numbness in the sacroiliac region, the lower, uh, the lowest bones in the spine or where the spine attaches to your hips. Um, a lot of pain in that region. Um, so it's just, it's like everything is being reworked. Everything is being, um, expanded and, lower 3d energies are leaving. And as that happens, we're having these massive purges. Um, I've been, uh, sneezing my head off for days. That's another ascension symptom that has come up. Um, a lot of people have been talking about that, uh, runny nose, like just sneezing my head off and and runny nose, although it could be dusty in here. I'm getting ready to hire a maid for Wednesday. So, um, (laughs) I, you know, it's just, that does happen. That happens. Um, but, uh, tinnitus for sure. Blurred vision, slight headaches, a lot of neck aches, posture issues. Um, which maybe I had that in my whole life. Right. So maybe, you know, I think maybe, maybe not. I'm going to throw out posture issues because it's affecting my back a lot of swelling in my body, in my uh, ankles and in my neck. My neck has been hurting a lot. Uh, palpitations in my heart as well as heart swelling, uh, lung swelling, asthma, just out of control. No matter what medicine I take, it's still not freaking working. Um, unable to breathe, uh, shortness of breath in addition to asthma and allergies. Uh, stiff, just really, really stiff. And I've had hip pain in my left hip that just hasn't gone away. And I I think I pulled something when I moved my bed last week and it just, it's like gotten worse or it hasn't gone away at all. It's a muscle like right on my hip bone that I didn't even know existed. (laughs) And boy, do I know it exists now. It hurts so bad. Even like took a hot shower, put the hot water on it. Nothing helped. It's just... Naproxen, took a, a naproxen or naproxen sodium, you know, to take the, the swelling out and nothing, nothing is where it's like crazy. It's like, what the hell? So I just, I want to throw out, those are the things that I've experienced. So we'll see, we'll see how it compares to what other people are experiencing. So here, let's go to Instagram and I saved these things cause I wanted to share it with you guys. Oh, look, hey, I got a brand new follower. That's cool. I keep getting, um, like, several followers and then several, like, delete me right away. And then I get several more and then they delete me right away. But I keep getting these people who want to scam me and then they, like, delete me without contacting me. It's very odd. So (laughs) I don't know what that's about, but okay. Um, Yeah, the most recent one was, you know, they always start off with, may the ancestors be with you. And I either delete them or I'll get back to them and go, yeah, and also with you, God bless you. And I'll say, it's cool to meet a fellow uh, person who works magic and works the ancestors. I always work with my ancestors. Thank you. Usually they go, oh, all right, cool, thanks. And then they never talk to me again. (laughs) And sometimes I don't waste my time. I just delete it because they're just trying to get me to pay them money for, you know, getting my husband back. Well, I'm sorry, he's dead. I don't want a zombie I don't want him back. Um, all right, here we go. Saved and let's see spiritual things. So, um, 
let me see. There was like a lot of stuff, man. Um, let me see if this was an ascension. Um, oh yeah, this was something else. Union energy. I'm going to read that one. Maybe I'll read it tomorrow. Okay. Under pressure in the cocoon, according to the ace of moon, it's all one word. If you want to follow uh, this person uh, under pressure in the cocoon, she says a weekend of major transformation and rebirth, rebirth, a lot of lower back tension, sacral genital sensations. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I'm having a lot of Kundalini around my ankles, my feet, and in the genital region, lots of Kundalini energy. It's kind of free. It feels like someone's touching you and you're like, what the hell? Yeah. I quickly put out my mind because being a Virgo that I am, I was like, I don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to tell you because <laughs> if it's happening to you and it's happening to me and it happened to this person, then that must, it must mean it's an ascension symptom. So anyway, UTI pain. I don't have that U- urinary tract or urinary tract infection like pain. I don't have that, which is good. I hope you guys don't have that. Um, cracking and popping shoulders and neck and hips and left arm. This person always has issues with the left side of her body. I don't know if that's, and I'm having left hip pain. So I don't know if that's a thing or if that's just her. I don't know. Anyway, uh, left migraine, a deep ache in the left shoulder being transmuted and worked on. Oh, I kind of actually do have a little bit of pain in my left shoulder. So, um, yeah, left migraine, very strong forehead and third eye pressure. Somebody wrote to me a couple hours ago and said that he was having the same thing. Um, third eye, lots of third eye pressure, but I told him what to do to work on his third eye. And he had a really massive awakening that is happening right now. If you're just new spiritually and you're waking up and you start doing any little tiny thing, you're going to have massive gains really fast at this time. Whereas it took me a year to get any freaking gains, you know, 25 years ago, it now it takes like, uh, you know, one or two times or a week or a month. So I'm really happy for you guys are just spiritually awakening now. And you're like, woo, I'm having this. I'm having that, having all these spiritual gains. It's amazing. This is a wonderful time to wake up spiritually. All right. So the other things are, um, a lot of heat in your head almost feeling like you were having a fever internally, although you didn't have a real one. You know what? Today, my uh, left side of my face completely got red and like swollen and hot to the touch. And I felt like I had a fever. So that actually did happen to me today. And I was, well, I was in my bathroom and the sun was coming through the sun, um, the sun roof, whatever skylight. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not in a car. Uh, and it was uh, affecting me. It was like super hot in my bathroom. And, you know, the hot, strong, you know, South American sun. I'm in the equator, so we get the strongest sun here. And uh, you'd think I'd be a lot more tan, but I'm not. But yeah, it's just, um, I think that might have been what fe- affected me. But now I read this, I'm like, yeah, okay. Maybe that's what it was instead. So yeah, it feels like you have a fever and you don't. I felt really feverish earlier but I don't have a fever. It's a weird, weird feeling. Okay. So, um, feeling very strong head pressure, almost like your head is being squeezed by a goblin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm getting that a little bit. And <laughs> she says this same head pressure happened a while back as well. And she says she thinks it was in May. I remember this happening to me like three other times in the past three years. So it's happened a few times. And I remember, The only way I could describe it, and it's not as strong today um, as I've had it in the past, but the only way I could, it it, it felt like a big hand was holding my head and pulling it upward and squeezing it. And it felt like Mickey Mouse's hand, you know, like I was telling my, my daughter when she was here, it was like three years ago and she's still, you know, living with me and still a teenager. And she said, you got to go to the doctor. I'm like, well, if I say this to the doctor, they're going to put me in the nut house. I have no other words for it though feels like Mickey Mouse has a giant hand and he's squeezing my head and pulling it upwards towards heaven. <laughs> it makes no damn sense. And it sounds like I'm crazy and I'm not going to tell Dr. Dap because I don't have another way. I don't, I don't have other words for it. And I don't think, I think it's ascension symptoms. Of course, my oldest didn't believe in the ascension. She thought I was nuts. 
but, um, uh, throat. Oh yeah. This is another thing. Throat, sore throat, swollen throat. You could kind of tell for a couple weeks I've been having this swollen throat, uh, throat chakra issues, lots of throat chakra issues. So this person says your throat may be feeling pressure and tightness of a feeling of being constricted. And then also she put right knee ache and farting a lot, burping, yawning, coughing, sneezing, tummy cramps and aches leading up to physical purging in the form of, well, basically crapping a lot. You know, I told you guys about that. She calls it doo-doos. I just, whatever. I'm not, I don't doo-doo baby talk. Um, she says diarrhea and throwing up for some people have been throwing up. Oh, thank God I'm not throwing up. My son's been throwing up. As I typed this, she says, I had a vision of the Kundalini symbol, the two snakes that are squeezing our bodies. Perhaps that's why we have the pressure in this transformation. And she says, please prioritize your rest and lots of water this weekend. Now, this was two days ago, she put. So everyone's like, oh, my God. This is insane. I had loads of these this weekend, the left shoulder and the arm pain, the migraine. And I almost threw up again last night. And somebody else said, I dreamt of two snakes last night. I mean, all the, I mean, this is the, um, things that people are writing are, is just like crazy. It's like, yeah, everyone's having the same kind of thing. So, um, let's see if there's anything else here. Um, so let me look at how, what do I have for time? All right. We're just going to go into, there's a lot of stuff going with different signs as well. And I felt this true for me and this might be true for you. Okay. So for air signs, according to life with you always on Instagram, she says, for air signs, okay, you may be feeling sensitive today in the heart chakra. You're moving through emotional healing and you're letting go of all the negative feelings which have kept you stuck. You're also learning how to forgive yourself and other people for the role they have played and keep on playing in your life. As you heal, it would benefit you to reach out to God for strength as well as spend some time outside in nature. If possible, it'd be really helpful for you to be near the ocean, lake, beach, because water is very healing. I'd like to add to that rivers as well for water signs. You have been growing your wings and making them stronger for flight. You have been learning to embrace who you truly are so that the world can see your light. You have been in a period of expansion where you have been introduced by to so many things about yourself. Now it's the time for you to show the world, the authentic you let go of any fears of not being accepted and know that the true ones will always accept you shine your light fearlessly. And remember, this is water signs. And again, for water signs, she also says, some of you need to take a higher perspective and a bird's eye view about your situation. Be prepared to soar high and experience new things. Some of you may be traveling by air soon and such beauty awaits you. It's funny that she says, she says something about water to the air signs and something to the water signs about air. I thought that was funny. All right, and so for the fire signs, your previous past lives are the center of your attention right now. Are you feeling fearful? Are you scared? Are you suddenly having a sense of deja vu, like some of the things you are currently experiencing you already have? A current hurt or reluctance you're feeling is stemming from a past life experience of being let down by people or the person that you love. It would help if you did a past life regression or have a past life reading done so that you can truly understand and see how the past life is affecting you and heal it once and for all. Former cycles and patterns held for lifetimes finally need to be broken. You have the strength and the power now to do so. That's for fire signs. And for earth signs, (laughs) my fellow Virgos, (laughs) earth signs, this is what she says. You're at a time of increasing abundance. Thank God, I really need that. Yes, you have had days where you've had struggles, but that is about to get better for you. It all starts with your mindset. If you believe truly and deeply that you are abundant, then abundance in all forms will follow you. You may see an increase in wealth at this time or even an increase in love. Whichever area overflows for you, know that prosperity is yours and you're indeed favored by the universe. 
receive your gift or gifts with love and give thanks from a place of love. All right. So that's that. I'm going to go over now to spaceweather.com. Let's talk about some science right now. Um, (laughs) the science has been giving us, um, impetus to believe some of the other stuff that we're coming through because it just seems so unbelievable, right? But anyway, here we go. Solar wind speed is 373.0 kilometers per second. So it's calmed down a little bit since last week. The sun is blank with no sunspots. And right now, uh, the noctilucent clouds are gone now. They're totally vanished. Um, <clears throat> this is the first time since mid-May that there's absolutely no more noctilucent clouds circling the North Pole. And they've been gone since August 28th, which is what I've been saying. So finally they said this. Uh, they just, they didn't want to, you know, they're scientists. They didn't want to say anything until they were absolutely sure. But noctilucent clouds are the highest clouds on Earth. It, they are seeded by meteoroids. <laughs> Heavens to Mur- Murgatory. They're seeded by mer- meteoroids. Say that five times fast. They float at the edge of space. 83 kilometers above the ground. The clouds uh, form during summertime when wisps of water vapor rise up to the mesosphere, allowing water to crystallize around specks of meteor smoke. And this summer, because of the record cold temperatures in the mesosphere, this boosted the production of the noctilucent clouds. And they were um, spectacular displays all over Europe and widespread sightings. It went down as far south as Los Angeles, California, as far as latitude. So, and they will, they will come back in a few months and they'll be over the South Pole. Oh, great. I'm in the freaking middle. I can't ever see them. Such a bummer, dude. This, <laughs> the Southern season for noctilucent clouds typically stretches from November to February, austral spring to summer. And then which which is me, Austral spring to summer. And until then, Earth has no noctilucent clouds, and then we no longer have that electric blue crown that's in the upper atmosphere. A lot of people have been freaking out about it. There's a guy, uh, Planet X Hunter. He swears to God he sees another planet in the sky. He's crazy. I love this guy. He's like, look at that, look at that, you know. Oh, my God, the sky's glowing like it's daytime and it's nighttime. And every damn time I write... Yeah, it's called noctilucent clouds. Happens every year. So, noctilucent clouds, look it up. NLCs. And every time, you know, even the next day, oh my God, look at that. Look at it. It's like, oh my God, this guy never reads his comments. It's hilarious. I, I, I get a kick out of him, though. <laughs> his reaction, like, he, he won't say anything for a long time, and then he'll start to panic or freak out about stuff. And <sighs> half the stuff he freaks out about is normal. He just doesn't know. Anyway, we've had seven days without a sunspot. For some reason, Wages World started going nuts over, said that the sun is throwing off uh, solar winds in every direction, and oh my God, and it's not happening at all. It's not true at all. Um, (laughs) You know, it just said um, we're under minimum solar conditions, and the solar disk has been absolutely blank without any sunspots for seven straight days. In fact, the sun's X-ray output has flatlined and geomagnetic activity is low. I don't know what Wages World is talking about. Maybe he saw an old article. I, I honestly don't know. I went to the one of the articles that he said he got it from, one of the websites, and I didn't see anything new. So now I'm like wondering. I didn't hear his whole video. So, I mean, just to be honest, maybe he wants to talk about something that happened a long time ago. He's like, a lot of 6.0 earthquakes have been happening and... There's all this stuff coming from the sun right now. I'm like, no, there's not. I've been watching the sun, so I don't know what's up with that. But usually Wages World is really a good, you know, he's interested in this stuff. But he's not a scientist. He's just pointing out stuff he finds on the Internet. But I don't know. I'm just looking at this going, I don't I don't see it, though. I wanted to see what he was saying so I could go, ooh, you know, but no. It wasn't as major as what he was making it out to be. Twice in a row I've gone to his channel, and then I went to check it out, and it's like, no, when I do my research, I don't see the same thing he is, and I don't know why. Anyway, um, <clears throat> having said that, we are having a lot of uh, neutron counts in the air, according to Ulu, Finland University. 
In fact, in the past 48 hours, we've gone up by 0.7%. We're at a 10.6% of the space age average right now, which means it's very, very high. So I, I think that a lot of our current ascension symptoms were caused by just the cosmic radiation coming our way. Now, the thing is, we are tomorrow and the next day, we'll be hit again by a lot of solar, powerful solar winds, even though there isn't not even one coronal hole available on our on the Earth side of the sun. This is from a few days ago. It, it's taking four days to get here. Um, and there's a very cool um, picture that makes the sun look like a stack of flat pancakes <laughs> from San Francisco, California. If you want to go to spaceweather.com and see this beautiful, I can't even ex- explain this pink. It's very, very uh, bright and mm, maybe like um, neon. It's like a neon pinkish orangish. It's really beautiful. It reminds me of the 1980s colors that everybody decorated their house with in Miami. <laughs> it's like something you'd see on Miami Vice this color. All right, but it's in reality world. Yay, we love reality world, <laughs> which is what I call the actual world. Anyway, um, well, they, we don't have any brand new fireball uh, reports, but from yesterday, There were eight fireballs over the United States, according to NASA's All-Sky Cameras and the All-Sky Fireball Network. We had seven sporadics and one Delta Iota Aquarid. So there we we have it. Now, Schumann Resonance uh, today, according to DisclosureNews.it, was 17, still very low. And according to the GCMS Magnetometer of the HeartMath Institute, they have no news. They're, they're no longer saying that it's not available. It's just that they haven't updated it since August 17th. They're still in the fire path. So let's just send them some love and light and hope to God everything gets back to normal again uh, soon. All right, let me see where we're at here. Um, so I, I did draw a card for the collective today. And I came up with the Three of Cups. This is our This is a very good card. Of course, three is related to the uh, Empress. She is the queen of all creativity. She is pregnant, which means you might be working on a project, not necessarily a baby. It could mean that, though. (laughs) I know one of you is working on a baby, (laughs) Janine. But I, I, you know, I look at this and I, and I think this is a good, good sign. It's three women dancing under a full moon and they're all raising a cup to the heavens. And there's three cats and they're just playing on the rocks with three butterflies. I, I'm going to put this on my uh, Instagram later so that you guys can see this beautiful card. Let me, uh, oh no. Today's card. Did not mean to do that. Oops. <laughs> yeah, today's card. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the. Uh, that's funny. I hope that I hope that came across because I thought that was funny. All right. Um, here we go. Three of Cups. I'm going to read to you guys the description. Whoops. Provided I could get to the page. Here we go. Everything is better when shared with friends. Three of Cups. Dance as if no one is watching and raise a cup to joy and friendship. What could be better than coming together in merriment and joy? If you ask these three witches, they would tell you not much. They may be different ages and from different paths, but they support each other's endeavors and cheer each other on through good and bad. On this day, they may be celebrating the achievement one has made of simply enjoying the moment. What does it matter? They're together, and the moon is overhead, and that is the reason enough to dance. Here are things to consider. The Three of Cups almost always represents a group of women, although there is nothing to say it couldn't stand for any supportive bunch of people. Of course, it could be men. doesn't matter. You know, the gender. We're just, you know, (laughs) we're all about gender bender here. We're we're not interested in, um, you know, all heterosexual all the time. No heteronormative binary stuff 100% here. Um, Okay, so 
They may be family or friends, but either way, you know that you can rely on these particular folks to be there for you. So who do you celebrate with in your life? If you can't answer that question, it might be time to create your own circle of kindred spirits. Hopefully you're fortunate enough to know who these witches stand for in your life and you will be sharing joy with them again soon. Uh, yeah, I think it's time for me to get some new friends. That's for sure. Who I looked down and said 44, 33. So there you go. There's your angel number. I, um, yeah, most of my, most of my, uh, close friends that I've had for very, very long time, um, have died. So I have one good friend, Vera, and she called me and left a message. I saw on my notifications. I do need to get back to her, but I had lost her number. And like for months I've been like, Vera, call me, call me, call me. It's like, Oh my God, she needs to turn on her intuition. (laughs) And she's in, um, Las Vegas and, uh, she's a real estate broker and she's got a real estate license in a couple different states. She's an amazing woman. If you ever need real estate, let me know. Cause now I have her number again. I'm going to come over here by the window and see if you guys can hear the, I don't think you could hear the river today. I don't think you, you can darn it. I was hoping you could now over the industrial park type of noise that I hear over from the farm across the way. I had it open earlier and I was getting ready to record and this alarm went off for like 20 minutes. It was super annoying. And then I thought, well, it's over. I'm going to go over by the window and record the river. And then these kids are coming by with their bicycles, which is adorable, but also (laughs) not the sound I was trying to record for you guys. I'm sure you know what kids sound like and not these particular kids. Everyone's an individual, but Maybe one of these days I'll go down and record the river for you. Anyway, um, I'm going to take a quick break, guys. And when I come back, I'm going to record. uh, (laughs) Well, I'm going to. By the time you hear this, I will have already recorded. But (laughs) uh, read was the word I was going to say, damn it. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I will be reading to you guys the Kaiba Lion again. Hopefully I will not leave my body and go to the portal, (laughs) which I would love to do when I'm reading it alone, but I'm trying to do a show. I think they know better now. And for the last two weeks, I was able to not, you know, I was able to stay here (laughs) on this plane of existence to speak to you guys. So, um, anyway, I'll be right back with the Kaiba Lion written and published in 1912 by three initiates right after this. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. (laughs) 
All right, guys, here we go with the Kybalion. Now, I did say I was going to tell you a story about this before we get into the book, and I just remembered. <laughs> oh, my God. So, here we go. Um, all right. Let me see here. Now, Yasmin, she is from, I believe, Germany, and she has been writing to me for a while. She's a a listener of the show, and she told me, I'm trying to find her exact words, otherwise I'm going to botch the story. Um, Oh, dagnabbit, where is she? She told me this story. Now, why am I not finding it? She told me a story about the the book, The Kaiba Lion. She tried to read this years ago. And she is so happy. Yeah, I don't know why. It won't let me see it. Okay, um, Yasmin, if I say it wrong, I'm sorry. (laughs) She is so happy that I am reading this book because this is a story she told me. Now, I think she said two, I don't know if she said two or three books, but here it is. Okay, <laughs> Yasmin years ago had the Kaiba Lion and two other books. I think they were also spiritual books. And she put them in one of those really big envelopes that you can like lick and seal. And she sealed the envelope. She didn't say anything about licking. I'm assuming it's a lickable envelope. Might be the one that has a peel and stick. Either way, this envelope, she sealed it completely and put it to the side because it was books she wanted to make sure to read later. And one day she's like, that's it. Today's the day I'm reading the Kaiba Lion. And she had this burning desire to read the Kaiba Lion. And when she opened up the envelope, there were only two books in there. She had sandwiched it between two books. This is the way I remember the story. Hopefully it's right. But anyway... <laughs> so the Kaiba Lion was there, definitely there, because she definitely wanted to read it. And when she went to read it, it was gone. You guys, I swear to God, this book is a portal. This book, I looked down and it said 222 right when I said that. Oh my God. I said the word portal right at 2 minutes and 22 seconds into this part of the recording. So there you go. And here's Blackie and Lobo barking their heads off again. Usually it's Barky. I mean, Bla- I should call her Barky. <laughs> that's all she does is bark her head off. I'm trying to call her Jasmine because it just makes us look like racist. We did not name her Blackie. The, the neighbors did years before we met. I mean, years before we lived here because these dogs belong to no one. The wolf dogs. But you, hear, you can hear. <laughs> I'm going to just start calling her Barky. Barky. <laughs> I'm sure she'll understand me. She's very smart. I read an article today that says the dogs actually do understand us. That's pretty cool. All right, let me get back over here to the actual reading of the book. So this book is a portal. And, you know, for the first several weeks that I read this, I, I was like leaving my body and talking to the three initiates who do not show their faces, by the way. They're all wearing white robes with giant hoodies. They're all like white, but they're like long hooded robes I'm calling them hoodies <sighs> but they don't show their faces they don't want anyone to know who they are and I don't know who they are <laughs> and I mean I don't know if the three people who wrote the book are the same as the three initiates or if they're calling themselves the three initiates and they were channeling three beings of light from another plane of existence I don't know where this book comes from and they don't really say it in the book. I mean, maybe at the end of the book, because I don't think I've ever gotten through. I don't think I've gotten this far in the book, to be honest, because I couldn't read it before. 20 years ago, I tried to read this book, and I couldn't read it without leaving my body and talking to these men. And they just point to the book, and I'm like, what? what, what? Like, I was already reading the, you know, the book on Earth, you know? Why do you got to, you know, pull me up through the portal? It's freaking me out, you know? <laughs> Why can't you just leave me alone? I'm trying to read here. (laughs) Anyway, here we go. We'll see what happens tonight. Hopefully, I'm doing this early so that I don't fall asleep or I don't go through the portal or I'm just like the sun just went down a few minutes ago. So I'm like, I'm doing this very early for me. You guys know me. I'm going to publish it as soon as I'm done. So anyway, last week 
We ended with a sentence, as one of the old hermetic writers has truly said, he who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power. Have you guys been thinking about that and how vibration can help us manifest every single thing that we want in our lives? (laughs) I mean, I'm probably going to go back and read this again, maybe even just listen to myself reading it. That might be powerful. I don't know. Hopefully it's helping you guys. Um, I do know that God puts light codes and downloads and upgrades in my voice as I speak to you. Um, so this is part of my service to God is my service to you guys. So hopefully (laughs) reading this book is going to do some awesome things for you. All right. So we left off at chapter, uh, 10 and that's where we're going to pick up today. As soon as I get these reader glasses on the cheaters, here we go. Chapter, chapter 10 polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. The Kaibalion. So I just love when it kind of matches up with the thing I said in the first part. And I don't know. I didn't read this part yet until right now. <laughs> oh, I just got to love that, man, every time. Literally ask God, what do I talk about today? And that's what he said. And then now this. <laughs> every time. <sighs> And it's just a thrill for me every time you'd think that I would be like, oh, I'm used to it by now, but it's every time it gets me. All right, let's continue with the book. The great fourth hermetic principle, the principle of polarity embodies the truth that all manifested things have two sides, two aspects, two poles, a pair of opposites with manifold degrees between the two extremes. The old paradoxes which have ever perplexed the mind of men are explained by an understanding of this principle. Man has always recognized something akin to this principle and has endeavored to express it by such sayings, maxims, and aphorisms as the following. Everything is and isn't at the same time. All truths are but half-truths every truth is half false there are two sides to everything there is a reverse side to every shield etc etc the hermetic teachings are to the effect that the difference between things seemingly diametrically opposed to each other is merely a matter of degree It teaches that the pairs of opposites may be reconciled and that thesis and antithesis antithesis are identical in nature, but different in degree and that the universal reconciliation of opposites is affected by a recognition of this principle of polarity. The teachers claim that illustrations of this principle may be had on every hand and from an examination into the real nature of anything. Is that what it said? Did I just say, it? yeah, that was it. Okay. They begin to, sh- by, okay, no, excuse me. They begin by showing that spirit and matter are but the two poles of the same thing. The intermediate planes being merely degrees of vibration. They show that the all and the many are the same. The difference being merely a matter of degree of mental mass not masturbation excuse me (laughs) it's always a surprise when I read (laughs) holy shit that was funny okay (laughs) they show that the all and the many are the same the difference between merely being merely a matter of degree of mental manifestation Thus the law and laws are the two opposite poles of one thing. 
Likewise, principle and principles. Infinite mind and finite minds. Then, passing on the physical plane, they illustrate the principle by showing that heat and cold are identical in nature, the differences being merely a matter of degrees. The thermometer shows many degrees of temperature, the lowest pole being called cold and the highest called heat. Between these poles are many degrees of heat or cold, and you call them either and you are equally correct. The higher of two degrees is always warmer, while the lower is always colder. There is no absolute standard all uh, is a matter of degree. There is no place on the thermometer where heat ceases and cold begins. It is all a matter of higher or lower vibrations. The terms, the very terms, high and low, which we are compelled to use, are but poles of the same thing. The terms are relative. The same thing, so with east and west. Travel around the world in an eastward direction, and you reach a point which is called west at your starting point. And you return from that westward point. Travel far enough north, and you'll find yourself traveling south or vice versa. Light and darkness are poles of the same thing, with many degrees between them. The musical scale is the same, starting with C. You'll move upward until you reach another C, and so on. The differences between the two ends of the board being the same, with many degrees between the two extremes. The scale of color is the same higher and lower vibrations being the only difference between high violet and low red. Large and smaller relative, so are noise and quiet. Hard and soft follow the rule. Likewise, sharp and dull. Positive and negative are two poles of the same thing with countless degrees between them. Good and bad are not absolute. We call one end of the scale good and the other bad, or one end good and the other evil, according to the use of the terms. A thing is less good than the thing higher in the scale, but that less good thing in turn is more good than the thing next below it, and so on, the more or less being regulated by the position on the scale. And so it is on the mental plane. Love and hate are generally regarded as being things diametrically opposed to each other, entirely different, unreconcilable. But we apply the principle of polarity. We find that there is no such thing as absolute love or absolute hate as distinguished from each other. The two are merely terms applied to the two poles of the same thing. Beginning at any point of the scale, we find more love or less hate. As we ascend the scale and more hate or less love, as we descend this being true, no matter from what point, high or low, we may start. There are degrees of love and hate, and there is a middle point where like and dislike become so faint that it is difficult to distinguish between them. Courage and fear come under the same rule. The pairs of opposites exist everywhere. Where you find one thing, you find its opposite, the two poles. And it is this fact that enables the hermetist hermetist, to transmute one mental state into another. Along the lines of polarization, things belonging to different classes cannot be transmuted into each other. But things of the same class may be changed that is, may have their polarity changed. Thus, love never becomes east or west or red or violet, but it may and often does turn into hate. (laughs) And likewise, hate may be transformed into love by changing its polarity. Courage may be transmuted into fear and the reverse. Hard things may be rendered soft. (laughs) Ooh, baby. Sorry, had to add the ooh baby there. Dull things may become sharp. Hot things may become cold. And so on, the transmutation, transmutation, that is not the word it says. And so on, the transmutation 
always being between things of the same kind of different degrees. Take the case of a fearful man. By raising his mental vibrations along the line of fear, courage, he can be filled with the highest degree of courage and fearlessness. And likewise, the slothful man may change himself into an active, energetic individual simply by polarizing along the lines of the desired quality. The student who is familiar with the process by which the various schools of mental science, etc., produce changes in the mental states of those following their teachings may not readily understand the principle underlying many of these changes. When, however, the principle of polarity is once grasped and it is seen that the mental changes are occasioned by a change of polarity, a sliding along the same scale, the hatter is readily understood. I think it means ladder, but it says hatter, like the mad hatter. (laughs) Why does it say hatter? Okay, um... <clears throat> rereading that sentence again so it actually makes sense changing hatter to latter when however the principle of polarity is once grasped and it is seen that the mental changes are occasioned by a change of polarity a sliding along the same scale the latter is readily understood the change is not in the nature of a transmutation of one thing into another thing entirely different but merely a change of degree of the same thing, a vastly important difference. For instance, borrowing an analogy from the physical plane, it is impossible to change heat into sharpness, loudness, highness, etc. But heat may readily be transmuted into cold simply by lowering the vibrations. In the same way, hate and love are mutually transmutable. So are fear and courage. But fear cannot be transformed into love. (laughs) Uh, Nor can courage be transmuted into hate. The mental states belong to innumerable classes, each class of which has its opposite poles, along which transmutation is possible. The student will readily recognize that in the mental states, as well as in the phenomena of the physical plane. The two poles may be classified as positive and negative, respectively. Thus, love is positive to hate and courage to fear, activity to non-activity, etc., etc. And it will also be noticed that even to those unfamiliar with the principle of vibration, the positive pole seems to be of a higher degree than the negative and readily dominates it. The tendency of nature is in the direction of the dominant activity of the positive pole. In addition to the changing of the poles of one's own mental states by the operation of the art of polarization, the phenomena of mental influence in its manifold phases shows us that the principle may be extended so as to embrace the phenomena of the influence of one mind over that of another, of which so much has been written and taught of late years. When it is understood that mental induction is possible, that is, that mental states may be produced by induction from others, then we can readily see how a certain rate of vibration or polarization of a certain mental state may be communicated to another person and his polarity in that class of mental states is thus changed. It is along this principle that the results of many of the mental treatments are obtained. For instance, a person is blue, melancholy, and full of fear. A mental scientist bringing his own mind up to the desired vibration by his trained will and thus obtaining the desired polarization in his own case, then produces a similar mental state in the other by induction, the result being that the vibrations are raised and the person polarizes toward the positive end of the scale instead of towards the negative, and his fear and other negative emotions are transmuted to courage and similar positive mental states. 
A little study will show you that these mental changes are nearly all along the line of polarization, the change being one of degree rather than of kind. A knowledge of the existence of this great hermetic principle will enable the student to better understand his own mental states and those of other people. He will see that these states are all matters of degree and seeing this, he will be able to raise or lower the vibration at will to change his mental poles and thus be master of his mental states instead of being their servant and slave. And by his knowledge, he will be able to aid his fellows intelligently and by the appropriate methods, change the polarity when the same is desirable. We advise all students to familiarize themselves with this principle of polarity for a correct understanding of the same will throw light of the same will throw light on many difficult subjects. All right. I have 20 minutes in, so I think we're going to go ahead and read rhythm. Let me see. Rhythm is chapter 11. We're going to go ahead and read chapter 11 tonight. Okay, rhythm. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. The Kybalion. The great fifth Hermetic principle, the principle of rhythm, embodies the truth that in everything there is manifested a measured motion, a to and from movement, a flow and inflow, a swing forward and backward, a pendulum-like movement, a tide-like ebb and flow, a high tide and a low tide. Between the two poles manifest on the physical, mental, or spiritual planes. The principle of rhythm is closely connected with the principle of polarity described in the preceding chapter. Rhythm manifests between the two poles established by the principle of polarity. This does not mean, however, that the pendulum of rhythm swings to the extreme poles, for this rarely happens. In fact, it is difficult to establish the extreme polar opposites in the majority of cases. But the swing is ever toward first one pole and then the other. There's always an action and reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and a sinking, manifested in all of the airs and phenomena of the universe. Suns, worlds, men, animals, plants, minerals, forces, energy, mind, and matter, yes, even spirit, manifests this principle. The principle manifests in the creation and destruction of worlds, in the rise and fall of nations, in the life history of all things, and finally in the mental states of man. Beginning with the manifestations of spirit, of the all, It will be noticed that there is ever the outpouring and the indrawing, the outbreathing and inbreathing of Brahm, B-R-A-H-M, as the Brahmins word it. Universes are created, reach their extreme low point of materiality, and then begin in their upward swing. Ooh, 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 ooh. (laughs) Jude Dikoff, my near twin flame, do you hear this? You were right. This Jude was telling me this. He was telling me this, like in our interview, oh God, months and months ago, last year. Oh my God. Okay. All right. I just, I just had to say that. It was like eight or nine months ago. We were talking about this. I, I bought into it because I think it's real. And here it is in the Kaibalion. Apparently it, it, it is real. So, all right. <laughs> Universes are created. They reach their extreme low point. A materiality, which I believe was last year and a little bit into 2020. <laughs> and then they begin in their upward swing. 
suns spring into being and then their height of power being reached, the process of retrogression begins. And after eons, they become dead masses of matter, awaiting another impulse, which starts again the inner energies into activity and a new solar life cycle has begun. And thus it is with all the worlds. They are born, they grow, they die, only to be reborn. And thus it is with all things of shape and form. They swing from action to reaction, from birth to death, from activity to inactivity, and then back again. Thus it is with all living things. They are born, they grow, they die, and then are reborn. So it is with all great movements, philosophies, creeds, fashions, governments, nations, and all else. Birth, growth, maturity, decadence, death, and then new birth. The swing of the pendulum is ever in evidence. Night follows day and day night. The pendulum swings from summer to winter, then back around again. The corpuscles, atoms, molecules, and all masses of matter swing around the circle of their nature. There is no such thing as absolute rest or cessation from movement. And all movement partakes of rhythm. The principle is of universal application. It may be applied to any question or phenomena of any of the many planes of life. It may be applied to all phases of human activity. There is always a rhythmic swing from one pole to the other. The universal pendulum is ever in motion. The tides of life flow in and out according to law. The principle of rhythm is well understood by modern science and is considered a universal law as applied to material things. But the hermetists carry the principle much further and know that its manifestations and influence extend to the mental activities of man and that it accounts for the bewildering succession of moods, feelings, and other annoying and perplexing changes that we notice in ourselves. But the hermetists, by studying the operations of this principle, have learned to escape some of its activities by transmutation. The hermetic masters long since discovered that while the principle of rhythm was invariable and ever in evidence in mental phenomena, still there were two planes of its manifestation as far as mental phenomena are concerned. They discovered that there were two general planes of consciousness, the lower and the higher, the understanding of which fact enabled them to rise to the higher plane and thus escape the swing of the rhythmic pendulum which manifested on the lower plane. In other words, the swing of the pendulum occurred on the unconscious plane and the consciousness was not affected. This they call the law of neutralization. (sighs) Gotta love that. Its operations consist in the raising of the ego above the vibrations of the unconscious plane of mental activity so that the negative swing of the pendulum is not manifested in consciousness and therefore they are not affected. It is akin to rising above a thing and letting it pass beneath you. The hermetic master or advanced student polarizes himself at the desired pole and by a process akin to refusing to participate in the backward swing, or if you prefer a denial of its influence over him. He stands firm in his polarized position and allows the mental pendulum to swing back along the unconscious plane. All individuals who have attained any degree of self-mastery accomplish this, more or less unknowingly, and by refusing to allow their moods and negative mental states to affect them. They apply the law of neutralization. The master, however, carries this to a much higher degree of proficiency. And by the use of his will, he attains a degree of poise and mental firmness. Almost impossible of belief on the part of those who allow themselves to be swung backwards and forwards in the mental, by the mental pendulum of moods and feelings. 
The importance of this will be appreciated by any thinking person who realizes what creatures of moods, feelings, and emotion the majority of people are (laughs) and how little mastery of themselves they manifest. If you will stop and consider a moment, you will realize how much these swings of rhythm have affected you in your life. How a period of enthusiasm has been invariably followed by an opposite feeling of mood of depression. Likewise, your moods and periods of courage have been succeeded by equal moods of fear. And so it has ever been with the majority of persons. Tides of feelings have ever risen and fallen with them, but they have never suspected the cause or reason of the mental phenomena. An understanding of the workings of this principle will give one the key to the mastery of these rhythmic swings of feeling and will enable him to know himself better and to avoid being carried away by these inflows and outflows. The will is superior to the conscious manifestation of this principle, although the principle itself can never be destroyed. We may escape its effects, but the principle operates nevertheless. The pendulum ever swings, although we may escape being carried along with it. There are other features of the operation of this principle of rhythm of which we wish to speak at this point. There comes into its operations that which is known as the law of compensation. One of the definitions or meanings of the word compensate is to counterbalance, which is in the sense in which the hermetists use the term. It is this law of compensation to which the Kaibalion refers when it says the measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. The law of compensation is that the swing in one direction determines a swing in the opposite direction or to the opposite pole, the one balances or counterbalances the other. On the physical plane, we see many examples of this law. The pendulum of the clock swings a certain distance to the right and then an equal distance to the left. The seasons balance each other in the same way. The tides follow the same law and the same law is manifested in all the phenomena of rhythm. The pendulum with a short swing in one direction has but a short swing in the other while the long swing to the right invariably means the long swing to the left. An object hurled upward to a certain height has an equal distance to traverse on its return. The force with which a projectile is sent upward a mile is reproduced when the projectile returns to the earth on its return journey. This law is constant on the physical plane as reference to the standard authorities will show you. But the hermetists carry it still further. They teach that a man's mental states are subject to the same law. The man who enjoys keenly is subject to keen suffering. (laughs) That just gives me (laughs) such a terrible feeling. The man who enjoys keenly is subject to keen suffering. While he who feels but little pain is capable of feeling but little joy. The pig suffers but little mentality. I mean, but little mentally. Okay, start this again. The pig suffers but little mentally and enjoys but little. He is compensated. And on the other hand, there are other animals who enjoy keenly, but whose nervous organism and temperament cause them to suffer exquisite degrees of pain. And so it is with man. There are temperaments which permit of but low degrees of enjoyment and equally low degrees of suffering, while there are others which permit the most intense enjoyment, but also the most intense suffering. The rule is that the capacity for pain and pleasure in each individual are balanced. The law of compensation is in full operation here. But the hermetists still go further in this matter. They teach that before one is able to enjoy a certain degree of pleasure, 
he must have swung as far proportionately toward the other pole of feeling. They hold, however, that the negative is precedent to the positive in this matter. That is to say that in experiencing a certain degree of pleasure, it does not follow that he will have to pay up for it with a corresponding degree of pain. On the contrary, the pleasure is the rhythmic swing according to the law of compensation for a degree of pain previously experienced either in the present life or in a previous incarnation. This throws a new light on the problem of pain. The hermetists regard the chain of lives as continuous and as forming a part of one life of the individual so that in consequence the rhythmic swing is understood in this way while it would be without meaning unless the truth of reincarnation is admitted. But the hermetists claim that the master or advanced student is able to a great degree to escape the swing toward pain by the process of neutralization before mentioned by rising on to the higher plane of the ego most or much of the experience that comes to those dwelling on the lower plane is avoided and escaped. The law of compensation plays an important part in the lives of men and women. It will be noticed that one generally pays the price, quote unquote, of anything he possesses or lacks. If he has one thing, he lacks another. The balance is struck. No one can keep his penny and have a bit of cake at the same time. Oh, my God. In 1912, apparently a piece of cake cost a penny. Just just note that. I paid a dollar yesterday for a piece of cake. I just, 100 years, 100 penny, you know. (laughs) All right, sorry. Going back to the book. Okay. No one can keep his penny and have the bit of cake at the same time. Everything has its pleasant and unpleasant sides. The things that one gains are always paid for by the things that one loses. The rich possess much that the poor lack, while the poor often possess things that are beyond the reach of the rich. The billionaire may have the inclination toward feasting, and the wealth wherewith to secure all the dainties and luxuries of the table, while he lacks the appetite to enjoy the same. He envies the appetite and digestion of the laborer who lacks the wealth and inclinations of the millionaire. Hmm. And who gets more pleasure from his plain food than the millionaire could obtain even if his appetite were not jaded? nor is digestion ruined, for the wants, habits, and inclinations differ. And so it is through life. The law of compensation is ever in operation, striving to balance and counterbalance, and always succeeding in time, even though several lives may be required for the return swing of the pendulum of rhythm. All right, well... Let's see where we're at here. We we have 38 minutes, but you know what? This might be a good time to stop. I mean, okay, there's a few erroneous beliefs, I think, here, because it's assumed that millionaires don't work for their money. And I I feel like it's a contrary. I mean, some millionaires are born millionaires, but and and maybe they lack poor digestion, but that's only because they're not drinking vinegar and water. And, um, I don't know. I mean, I I feel like, you know, sometimes we choose to be poor to learn the lessons spiritually. And sometimes we choose to, you know, be poor for a very long time and then become rich to learn lessons of both. And sometimes we choose to become rich to learn other lessons. You know, it's like, for me, I think that is compensation. Absolutely. You know, you might be a pauper in one life and a king in another might be a queen in one life <laughs> and in the next life you're a poor ass diva <laughs> you know it can be, I think this is true but I feel like there was a few erroneous statements about rich people there's always a lot of strange um, 
erroneous beliefs among spiritual people when it comes to uh, millionaires or people being um, wealthy or rich or self-made. Self-made is different than being born at the silver spoon, but even then you chose that silver spoon, dude, you know? Some of us are born with a plastic spoon in our mouths. <laughs> Or, or a plastic spoon that's the family spoon. We all have to wait to eat for, for the other person to finish eating. Okay. Sorry, it's not that bad. It wasn't that bad in my life. But maybe it is that bad in someone's life, you know? Some people don't even use a fork or a spoon to eat. They use their hands, you know? So, all right. Well, there you go. There you have it. <clears throat> that was two chapters. I'm not going to read a third. It's a lot of information to digest. And I feel like I was laughing kind of because remember when I was saying that love and hate are not opposites, it's love and fear that are opposites? That made more sense to me. I feel like hate is, if you love somebody, I don't think you could ever truly hate them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I think that there's love and fear are opposites. Like, you know, you love somebody or you fear them. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. Maybe it is love and hate. I always thought hate was like the opposite of liking extremely. Maybe there's two different forms of love between, you know, when you say love versus hate, love versus fear. Maybe there's two different kinds of love. I don't know. I'm going to have to give that a good think. <laughs> I have another think coming apparently. So I don't know. Um, over the weekend, I watched a couple movies. One of the movies affected me deeply. It was like a really bad, bad, bad acid trip. So uh, I've been thinking of leaving or something like that. Don't freaking watch this movie. It will f- jack you up. It will jack you up. It's it, it, it freaked me out for hours after. It affected me deeply for hours after. I did watch Think Like a Man, <laughs> which is one giant commercial for Steve Harvey's book, apparently. Does he even have a book called that? I don't know. I haven't looked. If he does, I kind of want it. But <laughs> We're talking about the 90-day rule. 90-day rule. Don't sleep with a man, ladies, after, until you've been with them for 90 days. You know, that way you get to know each other really, really well, and he either falls in love with you or not <laughs> I mean but you know in 90 days right you know for sure so I thought that was interesting and then I watched a really cute little movie to make up for the bad acid trip movie I, I, this other movie I saw was um, Love Guaranteed which was pretty cool actually and there was a lot of cool themes in the movie like don't judge other people until you know them you know like don't just you know rush to snap judgments about somebody you know, because you're probably wrong. Every truth is a half truth, right? <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. This was like a pretty good book, man. Um, there was a lot. There's a lot of finger pointing and seeming judgmental things about people who become wealthy, and I feel like that's just another part of who you are, and you have to accept um, wealth and abundance your way. It's deeply spiritual. It's a very deeply spiritual because money is just energy, right? So it's your relationship to that form of energy, (laughs) you know, and we all know where we are on the scale of having or not having money, you know, some of us have very much, but we also lose very much sometimes, you know, and some of us uh, have very little and, and we lose some every now and again. It's almost kind of, you know, it's, it's always compensation. There's always compensation in that. So pretty cool about the, the talk of the poles, though. Law of rhythm and the law of polarization. Especially since a lot of things in the first chapter that we read tonight. <laughs> uh, it's like stuff I talked about in the first half of the show. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, anyway, I hope that um, you've enjoyed this episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. And I'm going to come back tomorrow with a show about Twin Flames again. We're going to do 
the tarot card reading for the month of September, which we always do in the first week or so of of the month. Um, but we're gonna, we're going to talk about uh, twin flames. I've been getting a lot of questions about twin flames. It's been coming up a lot. Tomorrow, I'm going to read a bunch of card readings that other people have done in the first half, uh, just in the past week that seemed to really, really ring true. At least if it rings true for me, all the people that are in my group that haven't met our twins yet, I think it'll ring true with you guys too. And some of us, and I don't know, I think I'm in this next wave. I hopefully I am, but, uh, and then after that, there's a, according to the last channeling I did on this, there's another wave coming in, I think next March or May, you know, some, sometime next spring, late spring, I guess we're so now, and then late spring. So by the end of October and then by the end of May. And I think after that, 144,000 couples will be together. That are the twin flame, uh, reunions will be done. Supposedly, you know, I mean, everyone has their own ideas and their own, uh, you know, track of where things are going and, you know, like if I don't heal myself at all, then my twin won't come my way. If he doesn't heal himself at all, then I can't come his way. But if I know what he's suffering of and I heal it in me, that does heal it in him. So if your, if your twin, if she's suffering from something, but she's asleep spiritually and you're away awake and you're aware <laughs> away is like the beginning of each word awake and aware uh, awa away <laughs> away <laughs> if you are aware of what that person is going through then you can start working on it start healing it start forgiving it but i had a lot of twin flame related things that i um saved on instagram so i could read to you guys because i wanted to share it you know, because we all have different experiences and different references and we have different things we pay attention to. <laughs> you could read something and then I could read the same thing to you. And because you're hearing it instead of seeing it, you're um, using a different part of your brain. You might catch it, a different meaning of it. So even if you've seen the same readings, you're going to feel it and know it on a different level. I've been asked a couple times in the past week for uh, twin flame readings, which I can do. But I did just order a couple days ago a couple decks of cards, which I won't get for another, you know, month or two, you know, um, and, and then I'll be able to do some twin flame readings. You know, I, I've been asked so many times that now I feel like I have to start doing twin flame readings. You know, I am a twin, but I haven't met mine only in telepathy and in dreams. And something I wanted to tell you guys too, um, before we go, uh, one of the ascension symptoms that have not been mentioned today is that we are having vivid dreams and dreams where we're going to see people or animals in our past that have died, that we love very, very much. We're having dreams about them. Uh, a couple people, um, you know, a couple comments I've read on various websites in the past couple days, people said, Oh, like I dreamt about my dog. I haven't thought about him in years and he died. And I had a dream that we were playing together or, you know, so a couple dreams. And I myself woke up this morning after having a very long dream about my cat, Narcissus. I used to call her Nar- Narcissa or Narciss- Narcissus. Narcissus, not narcissist, but Narcissus after the Greek God who was so in love with his face that, um, another goddess came along and turned him into a tree over, you know, where he could be, he could lean over the lake to see his reflection, but he couldn't quite see his reflection, you know, to punish him for not seeing others. But <laughs> I didn't know, um, I knew that story, but I didn't know about narcissists when I named, named her. She was a beautiful cat. Very beautiful. She was the rent of the litter and grew up to be a gorgeous cat. She had a long tail that shaped like a squirrel. It looked like a squirrel's tails, 
puffy and fluffy and fatter than she was. <laughs> and she was a very skinny cat. So she looked kind of strange. I've always had strange looking animals. But she was a, a beautiful, beautiful cat. But she showed me herself in her most recent life, and she just died. She's died a couple times and come back a couple times. And she showed me herself, and it, it was, uh, you know, in her new body. She's like a tortoiseshell cat now, or was. Anyway, I went to heaven, and we just hung out, and she could talk, and we were... I'm like, do I need to put you on a leash? And she's like, no, we've already done that, right? The first time I ever tried to put a cat on a leash was her. I took her to the post office, and they're like, uh, we don't allow animals in here. And I'm like, yeah, but she's my hearing ear cat. <laughs> hey, if you're allowed to have a seeing eye dog, I'm allowed to have a hearing ear cat. She hears for me. <laughs> I mean, she, everyone loved her. Everyone thought that was hilarious. And he's like, okay, fine, whatever. I'm like, just give me my, just give me my mail, dude. <laughs> You know, I'll get I'll get out of your hair. She's not even touching anything. Come on. <laughs> I mean, if anyone in this room is allergic to her, I am. And oh, I was taking Benadryl all the time just so I could have a cat. <laughs> I mean, I loved her that much. She was just oh, I just fell in love with her sweet little itty bitty, flea bitten face when I met her. But it was nice. I was in heaven. I was hanging with my cat. I had a little um, a little truck. In heaven, I guess I have a little truck and I, I put her in the back and, and we just sit and we had a picnic together. We were running in a field together. It was so beautiful. And I saw a couple of my friends from heaven that I don't remember. They're not from this life, but they're my friends from another life or something. And I got to see my friends. I got to see my cat. I mean, it was more like I hung out with my cat for hours. It was so amazing. And I woke up and I was just like, Oh, I miss my baby cat. And she was just kind of like, you know, you don't own me. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, but you're my cat. She's like, I'm not your cat. I'm your friend. You never understood that when we were together. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. She punished me, man. If I didn't share my Thai food, Pad Thai was her favorite. And if I did not share Pad Thai with her, oh my God, would she... She would, she would smack me across the face, sometimes with her claw. And then uh, one time she ran out of the house. And she came home for two or three days, and I was just heartbroken. I went on a date with um, one of the women I was dating at the time, and I, I went over to her house, and she was like, you should spend the night tonight. I'm like, well, I miss my cat, and I cried all night long for my cat. She's like, what the hell's wrong with you? Cats do this all the time. Not her, not this cat. I mean, I was so dramatic over my cat. And then she finally came home like two days later. She's so angry. She literally ran away for like almost three days. And I um, immediately bought, I, I immediately ordered the Thai food. I ordered her favorite and, and we ate that together. And then she kind of cuddled with me in bed that night. She would get under the, under the covers and put her arms on the outside of the covers like I did. And she put her head on my pillow. <laughs> It, she was a she was a freaky cat. She was very smart, very freaky little cat though. She was the one I told you guys about that she would shut off my alarm when the, the alarm went off, and she knew how to snooze it. So I'd fall asleep more, and she would cuddle more. And she's the one that would open the door when someone knocked on the door. She would just let people randomly in, and she would answer the phone. She answered the phone once, and my dad called, and he thought I was being funny with him that I was just trying to be like non-responsive or non-communicative. I wasn't even home. <laughs> My cat answered the phone. She probably sat there and stared at the phone like, well, talk, dude, you know? <laughs> um, anyway, anyway, I just spent hours in heaven with her. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. She's such a good cat. She's such a good little friend. And, you know, um, I've noticed that as we evolve as humans, all the animals in the animal kingdom are also evolving. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Um, everyone has to go through an evolvement. And maybe I'll talk about this later in the week. But, um, I mean, I don't know if dolphins and seals have always been rapists, but 
there's been a lot of footage and evidence taken in the past few years that they're now raping each other and other animals. It's hor- It's horrific. I don't know, did they learn that from us? Is that something that we have to go through each individual species? I don't know. But anyway, um, <clears throat> but I've noticed it. I've noticed that the dogs, the, the wolf dogs outside, they are also evolving and growing. They can understand us and my son is teaching them about love and how we need to love everybody. So we need to stop attacking dogs because they walk by our house and they're still doing it, but to a much lesser degree. So they're learning and growing. And I've noticed that other animals are evolving. So, I don't know, that's another fun thought for the day. And <laughs> anyway, I will be back tomorrow. You guys with all unique and original programming, just like always. And that's it for today, folks. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go and, probably do a little bit of schoolwork and I've got three readings to do now. I'm a little bit backlogged, so I've got to get to my readings and uh, I did get to one last week, so I've got three more. (laughs) Anyway, uh, that's it for now, guys. I love each and every one of you and I want to thank you for your continued faith and confidence in me, my abilities and in my show. And for those of you who have been mentioning me, oh my gosh, Thank you so much for mentioning me. Um, Ishelle has mentioned me. Kelsey has mentioned me. I think Becca has mentioned me in the past week. Um, a lot of people have mentioned me. Yasmin, I think, has mentioned me. I think. Maybe you didn't. Sorry if you didn't. But if you didn't do it, damn it. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Yasmin. <laughs> she and I have been talking a lot. Okay. But for those of you who have mentioned me into your Facebook groups and especially the spiritual groups, because when I try to post about myself, then I get kicked out of the group. And it's like, oh my God, it's like, I want to be able to say, hey guys, I have a free show, come listen. And for some reason, the moderators always say, ah, they get jealous, or I don't know what, I told you, no selling anything. It's like, I'm not selling anything, it's free. I'm promoting myself, but it's free. <laughs> anyway, so if you guys can just put a good word into your Facebook groups, whether it be Ascension groups or UFO or ET groups or what have you, psychic medium groups, garage sale groups, whatever. Just say, Hey guys, I found something cool. That will really help me out. Cause I really need to be able to make a living. I lose my income in five weeks. I really be, need to be able to make a living and it, it, your help, your mentions, your tweets about me, your Instagram posts about the show metaphysical soul speak has, has helped. It's actually, I have been boosted a little bit. So I mean, I'm making, um, maybe like 50% more money now, which is a whopping $4 and 50 cents a day. <laughs> Not a lot, but I, I mean, I need to get that up, up, up. So if you guys know any celebrities that you can say, Hey, listen to the show and give it a shout out the next time you're on the air with somebody, you know, the next time, you know, and I'm, I'm willing to interview, um, you know, people who are celebrities and have a huge following. Cause I really need to boost my, my ratings here. (laughs) I did not win by the way, the podcast people's award. Thank you for those of you who voted for me. Um, I don't know who won yet, but I know I didn't. I know that all the people that were in that category have a lot more press than I do. And one of the ladies was mentioned in Ebony Magazine. She's the one that won last year, so she's got a massive following. It's like you can't compete with that. So <laughs> until you can, and I'm hoping next year I can. Anyway, I just want to thank you guys for everything, and I love you guys so much. Um, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow. But right now, I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Until next time, guys, peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. 
Thank you.